We'll discuss about the gallbladder anatomy, its functions and its clinical significance and use mnemonics to remember them. Gallbladder anatomy. Gallbladder is present on the outer side of the liver in the main liver cisura, that is in the gallbladder fossa. The gallbladder fossa extends from the right end of the potipartis to the inferior border of the liver. There is a line from this fossa to the inferior vena cava that divides the liver into the right and the left liver lobes. And the gallbladder fossa corresponds to the liver segment 4V and the 5 liver segments. Now there are anomalies with the location of the gallbladder. It can either be totally within the liver known as the intrahepatic position or it can be behind the liver known as the retropatic position. It can either be in retroperitoneal position or it can even be on the left side it is very rare and accounting 0.2%. Now the shape of the gallbladder, it is a pure shaped structure and it's around 7.5 to 12 cm long. Now let's recall about other structures that are 7.5 cm long. It can be remembered by the term ABS, A means anterior wall of the vagina or virgin uterus, B means bile duct and S means second part of the duodenum. Now the thickness of the gallbladder is less than 3 mm and if it is more than or equal to 5 mm then it is suggestive of the acute cholecystitis. The normal capacity of the gallbladder is 25 to 30 cm but when it is markedly distended it can enlarge up to 10 times its normal capacity that is 300 ml. Now let's review some of the structures which has 30 ml capacity. One is the stomach or newborn human baby and other is adult pylorus capacity which equals to 30 ml. Parts of the gallbladder. There are four parts of the gallbladder. The fundus, body or the corpus, infundibulum and the neck. Now let's begin with the fundus. The fundus is surrounded blind end that normally extends 1 to cm below the liver margin. In the angle between the lateral border of the right tractus abdominis and the ninth costal cartilage. And this is known as the gallbladder point. And the Murphy sign is elicitated when the gallbladder point is gently pressed. This causes the catch hold of the breath. Now let's know who is Murphy. Murphy is a John Benjamin Murphy that is American physical and abdominal surgeon and there are various terms associated with it. Murphy is tried which means the sequence of the abdominal pain followed by the vomiting and followed by the fever which is seen in the case of the acute appendicitis. Other is a Murphy syndrome that consists of the osteopathy, striata, pigmentary dermopathy and white forelock syndrome and then there is a Murphy pond sign or test that is the percussion or pond tenderness at the costal vertebral angle that is the renal angle which is seen in the pyelonephritis and perinephric abscess. The fundus contains most of the smooth muscles of the organ in contrast to the body which is the main storage area and contains most of the elastic tissue. Fundus is entirely covered with the peritoneum. Let's know about the phryogen cap. It is a folding of the fundus back of the gallbladder body and it has been derived from the word liberty cap which is soft conical cap with the apex point over associated with antiquity with simpler people in Eastern Europe and the Anatolia. The body of the gallbladder, it extends from the fundus and tapers into the neck. It lies in the gallbladder fossa and it is only covered inferiorly with the peritoneum and is related to the transverse colon and first and second part of the duodenum. Neck of the gallbladder. It is a funnel shaped area that connects to the cystic duct. It usually follows a gentle curve. It lies in the deepest part of the gallbladder fossa and extends into the free portion of the hepatoduodenal ligament. The convexity of the neck may be enlarged to form the infundibulum or the Hartmann's pouch posterior medially. The significance of the Hartmann's pouch is that the gallstone may lodge in this pouch causing the acute cholecystitis. Now let's know who is Hartmann. Henry Albert Hartmann was a French surgeon and there are various terms associated with Hartmann. Hartmann's procedure that is a proctosigmoidectomy with end colostomy which is done in case of the carcinoma of the colon. Another is Hartmann's critical point that is the site on the large intestine where the lowest sigmoid artery and astomosis with the superior rectal artery. Now the gallbladder is lined by a single highly folded tall columnar epithelium that contains cholesterol and fat globules. Mucus secreted into the gallbladder originates in the tubuloalveolar glands found in mucosa lining in the infundibulum and neck of the gallbladder but not from the body or the fundus. Now let's know the crypts of Lusca. Crypts of Lusca are the mucous membrane that contains indentation of the mucosa that sink into the muscle coat. Do you know what is the difference between the gallbladder and the gastrointestinal tract histologically? Gallbladder differs from the rest of the gastrointestinal tract in that it lacks a muscular mucosa and submucosa and has a circular longitudinal and oblique muscle fibers without well-developed layers. 
And the bonus tip is that esophagus contains all layers of the gastrointestinal tract except the serosa. That's why the carcinoma of the esophagus has laterally spread. Now the cystic duct. It connects the gallbladder to the common hepatic duct at an acute angle to form the CBD. The length of the cystic duct is variable with average of 3 cm. And the lumen diameter is 1 to 3 mm, that is equal to the lumen size of the appendix. Mucosa of the cystic duct is arranged in a spiral folds known as the spiral valve of Hister. They are 5 to 2 well in number. And the wall of the cystic duct is surrounded by a sphincteric structure called the sphincter of Lutkens. The cystic duct joins the supraduodenal segment of the CBD in 80% of the cases, while in 20% of cases, it can join lower in the retroduodenal part or the retropancreatic part, and it can go higher in the right hepatic duct or right hepatic sectoral duct. Blood supply of the gallbladder. Let's start with the arterial blood supply. The arterial blood supply of the gallbladder starts from the cystic trunk that gives rise to the common hepatic artery, that gives rise to the right hepatic artery, which later gives rise to the cystic artery. In 85% of the cases, cystic artery usually arises behind the common hepatic duct, whereas in 15% of the cases, it crosses in front of the common hepatic duct or the cystic duct. There can also be accessory cystic artery which arises directly from the gastroduodenal artery. The most dangerous anomaly of the artery supply is that the caterpillar turn or the moaning hand chomp. In this hepatic artery takes tortuous course in front of the origin of the cystic duct or the right hepatic artery is tortuous and cystic artery is short. This causes difficulty in cholecystectomy because it leads to the profuse bleeding causing difficult to control and the laparoscopic cholecystectomy may be converted to open cholecystectomy. The lymphatic drainage of the gallbladder. The gallbladder drains into the cystic lymph node of the lund, also known as the callous lymph node or the muscagnes lymph. The cystic lymph node of the lund is the centennial lymph node which lies in the fork created by the junction of the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct. The efferent vessels from the lymph node go to the hilum of the liver and to the celiac lymph nodes. Soft serous lymphatic vessels also connect to the subcapsular lymphatic channels of the liver. The significance of this is that this accounts for the frequent spread of the carcinoma gallbladder to the liver. Now the nerve supply of the gallbladder. It receives its parasympathetic, sympathetic and sensory innervation. Parasympathetic innervation occurs to the vagus nerve that causes the contraction of the gallbladder and secretion of the bile into the cystic duct. Whereas the sympathetic nerve supply occurs through the thoracic 7, 8 and 9 nerve roots. And the sensory innervation occurs through the vagus nerve, phrenic nerves and the thoracic 7 sympathetic nerves. And if you have any comments or queries, please write to me below. I'll be more than happy to answer. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos. Thank you.